Hey everybody, it's Emily from Life So Savory and today I'm going to be making a uh, throw pillow for my couch. We're going to try a button closure in the back for a little fun detail and I'm also going to be showing off um, some fabric panels that I designed for this very purpose. So I'm going to go ahead and get us started and then we will um, get sewing. So if you're not watching this live and you can tell by the little live box in the corner, you can go ahead and fast forward the next couple minutes while I get things organized. If you are watching it live, just hang tight. I will be done in a moment and then we will get sewing. So like I said, we're going to be making some fun um, couch throw pillows and I recently um, designed a a uh, fabric panel that has multiple um, sort of seasonal um, sayings on it that you can use for throw pillows. And I kind of, I've already cut this one up because I was prepping for today, but here is what it looks like. It's one yard of fabric and you can buy it off Spoon Flower and it has five, the designs for five different throw pillows on it. And you can order it. I just ordered this on basic cotton for my test but you can get it on a thicker canvas if you're worried because the fabric is a little bit thin. So I'm gonna see how these first um, throw pillows turn out and if I'm not a huge fan, then my next round, because I wanna add to the designs, will definitely be ordered on a thicker fabric. But you can use the same design and order it on any fabric that Spoonflower offers, which is a um, huge variety of fabrics. So let's just see how uh, today goes and um, if we like the final look when we're all done. So, hey guys, thanks for checking in, saying hi. Uh, I am just gonna do a couple of shares here and then we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I also will probably at the end show our living room and the new um, framed vinyl art. I don't know if you saw my post, yes, was it yesterday? But I shared the file to make your own and the tutorial on how I made um, some fun art for our living room. So I'll probably show those off because the couch pillows are going to go down by the art and I'm kind of working on that family room. Um, so we'll take a little field trip down there when I am finished and check that out. Okay, let's see if there's anything else I need to do. Let's Um, Berna, did you get my message? I don't know. Was it just sent recently? I'm if I if it I checked yesterday, but um I didn't check today. So anyway, thanks, Barb. Okay, so like I said, we are going to be making some couch throw pillows, and I already have the fabric um mostly cut. So we're gonna make the winter one, even though I'm hoping that it's actually the end of winter. Um, okay, I'll check when I'm done, Berna. Um, so this one says Winter Wonderland, and I ordered from fabric.com some uh, nice velvet, although it's not really velvet, whatever the, <laughs> whatever the cheap imitation is. When I write, I'm gonna be writing up a blog post about um, these pillows next week and then I'll put all the fabric and everything details in it for today I just put the link to the fabric panel for these if you want to check that out um, so anyway I ordered different colors of this velvet and today with the winter one I'm going to use um, this bluish teal and um, this pretty gray but I think it's a really nice um, couch pillow fabric and I already have a full one down there that is going to complement the seasonal one that I'm making here now for winter. So again, once we finish it, we'll go down there and check it out and see how it all um, goes together down in our family room. So I have some buttons here that I'm gonna try and put down the back for a closure. So this is going to be sort of a mash of envelope style and um, zipper and the zipper being there are the envelope being we have two pieces on the back and I'll explain that more when we get to that sewing part um, But kind of like a zipper because I don't need as much crisscross as if it is an envelope style so I can get away with less fabric 
Um, so I'm making 25 inch square pillows. I have these monster pillow forms, uh, which are 27 inches from Amazon, but the suggested pillow form, it was 25 or 26 inches and I want mine nice and puffy. So we're going with 25 inches. So I added two inches of seam allowance to each side of the back so that we can fold under a nice wide um, binding area to put the buttons and the button holes on. So that's the plan. Will I actually be able to do it? That is yet to be seen, but that is what I'm hoping for uh, for today. So I have cut uh, this out. Zipper and spare. Well, the zipper pillowcases, which I'll show when we go down there, took me like six minutes each. They actually were so, so, so easy. Um, but I want, I don't want to use up all my long zippers because this is a really big pillow form. All right, so we have our Winter Wonderland um, print. And then I've cut some panels of fabric that I'm going to sew around that Winter Wonderland to make it a 25 inch square, okay? So I've cut short ones that we will add. Let's turn this down just a little bit. So my plan is to add short ones to either side of the Winter Wonderland and then wider ones on the top and the bottom until it's a 25 inch square. That is the goal. Um, let me see how wide this is right now uh, to, to see really, do I want to trim off more of the white to show I might want to. Okay, so right now across, it's actually almost 22 inches. So let's trim that a little bit before we start sewing. And then here's the spring design, which I'll show you. So I'll be sewing this one in next. Isn't that cute? And then um, if you didn't see at the beginning, right now I have the panel has a Christmas one, a Thanksgiving one, which is sort of long and thin. So I'm thinking sort of a round or rectangle pillow form would be good for that one. And then a summer one here. Okay, so and I put the link where you can check out the, the, the this fabric um, panel in the description of this video. Blech, I can't talk right now. Um, so you get all five designs in one yard of fabric. And um, so you can check out the fabric options on Spoonflower. I just went with the basic cotton because I wanted to see the colors and really test how this turned out. They do have like more of a canvas fabric, which probably would be a little bit thicker and a little bit heavier um, for this purpose. So I'll have to see about that next time. So I'm gonna trim just a little bit from either side of my Winter Wonderland design. And so what I'm gonna do first is line up the end of the R with the W so that when I trim off this end, I'm taking fabric evenly off both sides of our design. And if I look really, if I measure, there's about two inches of white on either side or on the top and the bottom of my design. So I am going to try to trim it down to about two inches of white on the sides and that will give us more room for our color velvet. Okay, so now we should have approximately two inches of white all the way around our design and that will go down a little bit smaller once we um, add the fabric. So the first thing I'm going to do is take um, the velvet and this panel over to the serger and we're gonna sew it on and then we'll have to come back and trim it down to that 25 inch square and then we'll talk through the backing at that point. Okay, so again, here's my giant pillow form that I am making the pillowcase for. And I have some clips and things over here. So what I want to use for either side of this is these um, shorter pieces. And I already made a full pillow case from this color fabric, which was why I was kind of down 
to scraps. So I'm going to pin the fabric on either side of the short side of my Winter Wonderland. And for quilting, I know some people prefer to only use the regular sewing machine. Um, I still, I, I mean, this is like quilting in the loosest form, and I mean quilting by the fact that I'm gonna sew these, I'm gonna open it up, and I'm gonna sew other things to it. So you could say it's basic quilting, but um, I still like to use my serger, and then I'll just top stitch on top of that before we sew our other ones. I've been trying to keep an eye on this needle. It is looking like we're getting low on thread. So I have to kind of keep my eye on that. Now I don't love how this fabric shifted a little bit here. Um, I might cut that off and try again. I could pick it out, but it's not worth the quarter inch. So just give me a second. I'm just gonna slice off that seam. I know I have plenty of the color, and we'll just make sure on the other side of the white we take a little bit larger seam allowance. Okay, so I'm gonna try again and try to get this really centered. It appears that the velvet is the one that slid. So I'm gonna try to get that up by the needles and hope that it doesn't slide again. So that is much better. This side I'll just take a little bit larger seam allowance so that the spacing of that white fabric is still even. I'm gonna cut off about a quarter inch of fabric to account for the seam allowance that I just chopped off. Okay, so now we have our winter wonderland like this, and obviously this is way too big because we only need a 25 inch square, um, but we're just getting it prepped to put this top piece on. So now on my sewing machine, I'm gonna top stitch this part before I sew on the rest, and I'm going to turn the seam allowance more naturally goes towards the white, so I think I'll stitch it that way. And I'm just gonna top stitch in white thread. That seam allowance, and I'm moving it towards the white fabric. From there, we're going to put our other velvet piece on the top and bottom of our text. and then we'll have to trim it down to a square. I love making throw pillows. My husband probably thinks I'm crazy because about every two months he comes home and there's completely different pillows in our living room. Um, I also am always ordering different size pillow forms because I'm never sure which one I want, like what size I want. So I'll show you kind of what I have going when we head down um, at the end of this tutorial. All right, so there we have, um, our fabric and we've got plenty of width we do not really need this much width going now this is cut exactly the 25 so i'm trying to think uh, maybe i should trim this one down to the 25 so that i don't end up with an off center print so let's just swivel this real quick and cut this piece down. Here was the little seam allowance I chopped off. So I'm gonna center the um, Winter Wonderland saying because I want that in the middle of my um, the middle of my pillow. So we will do that by lining up those seam allowances or the seams, and then we'll put that on the one because we want 25 inches. I'm doing 25 inches and then I'm sewing seam allowance out of that, not 25 inches plus seam allowance. It's of course up to you how you want to do the size of your pillow form. So I'm going to cut 12 and a half inches 
which will give us 25 inches across, hopefully because I just sliced it. All right, so there is the first part of the pillow. And while I'm up here, I'm gonna grab and clip on the other edges just because it's easier than finagling it down by the sewing machine. So I'll pin on the top and the bottom. That is not very straight, that edge. And I will, we'll still have to come back and um, square this up when we're all finished. But for now, we'll be able to put it on here and get it sewn. Okay, so there's one side. I'm gonna open this up and put the other side. Looks like I have my blue stretches completely across that other part that I had. So we're looking good on sizing. Hi, Andrea, we're just making a pillow case, a throw pillow case, like for my family room, using a fabric panel that I had, that I designed and had custom printed. So um, it has designs for different seasons and different holidays, mostly seasons. And we are using the winter wonderland one and then I'm soon going to be sewing up this spring one. So that is what you missed. We're working on putting the front of the pillow form to, or the pillowcase together. And then once we have that, we are going to put, um, we're gonna make a back with a button closure. At least that's the hope. Um, the other thing, if you are interested in making throw pillows, I linked two tutorials for you. One with a envelope style pillowcase, which is super simple. Um, a super simple way to make a pillowcase. The other one I linked for you is a zipper style pillowcase. And that obviously is a bit trickier, but it's great. I, I mean, it's just, it's easier to be able to change. Well, I guess with the envelope you can change out your pillow too. Um, but if I have zippers on hand, I'm kind of partial to the envelope style but I don't always have zippers big enough. Okay, so there is the bottom part sewn on. Looks like we've got a clump of serger thread here. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing to the top. like fabric from fabric.com. I can't remember exactly. It's obviously not velvet because velvet is pricey. Um, but I can't remember um, what the exact name of it is. I can look at my order. And when I do write about these pillows next week, I'll make sure that I will put um, I will put the links to that. So Andrea, the fabric already is for sale on Spoonflower. The link is in the description of this video with, I think it says the fabric panel information, and you can go over and it will take you to the Spoonflower site and you can buy the fabric panel there. It has five pillow designs on one yard of fabric. So make sure you order the full yard. Don't get a smaller section or you'll get a weird um, piece of it. And you can also choose the fabric that you want. So this is just the basic cotton that I ordered mine in, but they also have canvas and all sorts of other, that blue really affects the color of the video. Um, they also have other 
um, thicker fabrics if you want. Um, okay, so before we go and trim this up, I'm going to stitch on the seam allowance again. And then we'll go trim this down to the square that we want it to be and talk about what the back of our pillowcase is going to look like. So like I said, the fabric information is in the, the link or in a link in the description of this video, as well as links to two different style throw pillows. If you want to make a throw pillow and don't have a way that you want to make it. So I have the envelope style and I also have the zipper style listed for you. So you can check those out. And those are two of my favorite ways to start throwing sewing throw pillows. Say that five times fast. And then um, today we're going to try a button closure. I don't love making buttonholes. So you can tell I really love y'all to make, to do buttons live because it's really not my favorite. Um, but we're going to try it today. And I think it will be a cute design on the back of this pillow if we can get the buttons to cooperate. So we'll see. Okay, so here is our Winter Wonderland fabric panel sewn into the blue fabric for the front of our pillow. Hey Michelle, so um, if you click the link in the description of this video that goes to my Amazon shop, you will find a great starter sewing machine. It's a super basic one by brother, but it is perfect for starters in the fact that it has all the basics you need without all the bells and whistles that you don't need that confuse beginners. So I would totally recommend that one. That's always... Hmm. Not quite sure how this... Let's see. I want this to be as square as possible. Squaring things up is not my strong suit. I will admit that. My mom is a quilter and she always makes sure things are really square before she, you know, continues sewing and I'm just like, hack that. Let's get this off. So, uh, I want, I don't want to make this too small, but yet, so that's 24, 25. So I need to keep that full width. So let's try, oops, to trim off this part here okay and then let's flip it over and trim off this part here it's probably not gonna be perfectly square but <laughs> um okay so hopefully those are the good on the sides now what i need to do is those are lined up. I need to make it 25. So we have the width. Now we need 25 on the height. And I this is when I wish I had a bigger cutting mat. My cutting mat doesn't even go 25 inches. So we want 12 and a half. 12 and a half. Right? So if I line that up there, and I line that up there. You guys get to see my thought process here as I think through things. Okay, let's open it up and see if it looks square. Oops. All right. Probably not perfect, but pretty square. Okay? So there we go. Winter Wonderland pillow, which is going to be really cute. Okay, so now for the back of the pillow, let's eye this up so we are going to lay out our front here and then I think I'm probably going to put the buttons on first 
but I'll show you what it's gonna be like, is this, I have one side that's 25 inches, and then I cut it um, 15 inches the other direction. So we have some nice overlap, okay? That side is not a full 25 inches long. Okay, so here's the overlap in the middle. If you are doing um, an envelope style pillow, I recommend overlapping a good eight to 10 inches on the back of your pillow so that when your pillow, your pillow form doesn't like ooze out of it. And if you do a 10 inch overlap, then that also gives you about an inch to turn over to finish both of these sides, okay? So, but for me today, I want to do a button placket down the back. So I'm going to finish the raw edge and turn over maybe an inch and a half. If I turn over an inch and a half, then I want to make sure that's going to give me enough overlap that I can put buttons on there. Maybe, yeah, an inch and a half. I think this is actually more like two. Okay, so if I fold over that inch and a half, then you can see that's right, Jennifer, you won't see it at all. Then you can see, so I'm going to have um, an overlap here and that's where I'll put my buttonholes and my buttons and then I dug out these six buttons from my stash and we're going to put them along there. So that is the plan. So the first thing that we need to do is finish the raw edge of this and then fold over that inch and a half placket and sew it down. And I'm going to do that and probably do the buttonholes on one side before I sew it to the pillow front so that it's easier to put the buttonholes on. So let's go finish and sew the placket part. For those of you that missed it, I, I might have mentioned this last week, but now it's official. So I, on Friday, I released my Serger Basics class. So if you're interested in learning more about sewing with the Serger sewing machine, I now have a class that's just the introduction to your Serger. And it's specifically for the brother, brother 1034, I know, isn't this gray fabric so pretty? Um, the Brother 1034 series, which is not this one, but I did use one for my class. It's video based, it has seven videos showing you threading, sewing, um, keeping your threads from unraveling, tension tips, and then how to do some fancier stitches like a rolled hem and a narrow overlocker and all those things. So if you are looking to um, be more competent in sewing with your serger sewing machine, um, you can check out lifesosavory.com backslash courses or just go to my um, homepage, lifesosavory.com and in the upper right hand corner, there's um, a spot that says courses and that will get you hooked up with that serger course. This week, is the last week that it will be $19. After Friday, I'll be adding lesson number three and the price will go up to um, probably $24. Um, but if you get in on the 19, you get all seven lessons. I'm just adding them over the month of March um, to get people into it. So you get if you get the introductory price, you only get two lessons this week, but you get lessons e added every Friday and within three weeks, I'll have all the lessons up. So you get a lifetime um, access to it for the introductory price. And it will continue to go up as I add those lessons, um, but you still get all the lessons for all the prices. It's just as I'm, because I don't have it totally complete, I have all the videos done. I just don't have it uploaded to the site and edited. So I was, 
put procrastinating on this project, the class, and I just decided that if I started selling it, that would force me to get it done. So I have an introduction and two lessons for you on the course website with the promise of each Friday, and now I have people signed up for the course waiting for the new lessons, so that's great accountability for me to make sure that I do add those new lessons each week. So if you're not comfortable sewing with your serger, it's a great class for you. If you are comfortable sewing with your serger, um, it's not a class for you because it's definitely just the very basics and an introduction. So check it out. And yes, for people like you, Jennifer, who have sergers and haven't used them yet, it's what you need just to kind of gain that confidence to get started. Actually, I'm gonna pull this a little bit closer because our next thing, woo, is gonna be buttonholes. So fun. Who's a buttonhole expert? Because I'm not, and I'll show you in a minute, but I have yet to have a machine that I thought had an accurate buttonholer. And I'll show you what I mean as we do a test. So you know how the buttonhole attachment has a spot where you stick your button so that it makes the buttonhole the right size. I always find that my buttonholes are way too big and I have to take the button out and actually squeeze it a little bit smaller. So if there is anyone who can give me some tips, I would love it because I don't know, I've had multiple different machines even different um, brands of machines and they all seem to have the same issue. So that is not really excited. So, hi Melissa, first timer, good to see you. We love having you here. Okay, buttonhole attachment. So we're gonna add that on and then here's where you're supposed to put your button, right? Let me grab one. I probably also should get my measuring tape so that we can measure and evenly space the buttons. Okay, so you're supposed to put your button in this part of the buttonhole or right, and then squeeze it, right? Squeeze it. So when I do this and I make a test buttonhole, which we're definitely gonna test on this scrap, I find that it's too big. So what am I doing wrong? I've lately gone to just making, putting, especially for my kids' clothes, I just put snaps. Oh, and then make sure when you're doing the buttonholes, you bring down, bring down that back piece. All right, so we will do double layer of fabric since that's what we have going and I'm going to scroll over to the buttonholes which are actually here and mm, let's see I guess I'll just do a square one they don't have a round one so we'll do a square ends Um, so, okay, let's try this, right? Okay, so I guess I have to push the button. Okay, so it's making the buttonhole. My real concern is, it, is it the right size for the button? Because like I said again, I kind of found that it really doesn't seem like it's the right size. But, so that's why I'm doing a test. I've gotten my button squeezed in there and I've kind of gotten good at like estimating, okay, it really is too big. So we just make it like two clicks smaller and go with it. My machines make the buttonhole fine. It's the sizing that seems to be the issue. Oops. Okay, so there it made a button. Let me grab another button. Okay, so actually this one looks pretty good in size. So there's my buttonhole and I'm gonna kind of place the button over it and it actually looks pretty good. So you can use either tiny scissors to cut your buttonhole open or a seam ripper is also, just wanna make sure you don't cut through the end 
of your stitches because that's what keeps your button full from unraveling. So looks like we're good and the size is good. So maybe just, I just needed you guys for moral support and uh, my button holder worked. Okay, so now to determine six evenly spaced buttons on 25 inches. <laughs> okay, so if it was 24 inches and I was dividing by six, I would place it every four inches, right? So I should be able to place it every four and a quarter and have evenly spaced buttonholes. Does that sound right? I mean, I'm gonna know here pretty soon if I end up with six clips representing six buttons. But does that make, that means the last one is going to be actually off the thing, right? So maybe I only put five buttons. Okay, so that's evenly spaced with five buttons and that looks, I don't really need them any closer than that. I don't think. We don't need them any closer than that. So we're gonna make buttonholes on this side of the fabric and we're gonna make five and then we will sew it on. Right, I'm gonna leave the other inch for seams. Um, and then I'll sew it together. I'm not gonna like hand stitch all the buttons because that will be super tedious and you guys don't wanna watch that. But we can put it together and see how it looks and then we'll go down and we're gonna check out my family room and I'm gonna show you, um, that's a good idea, Marsha. Um, I'm gonna show you some other pillows that I've been making recently and my new wall art that I put in our family room. So we will take a look at that um, after we get this put together. So let's make some buttonholes. And so I, my pin is gonna be in the, about in the center of my buttonhole. So we're gonna try to estimate that as well. Again, this is a pillow, not a shirt, so I'm not um, as worried about it being exact. No one's gonna be wearing this. And in fact, this is the back of the pillow. So unless the pillow gets flipped over, you're not even really gonna see it. So not super worried about it. But I do wanna do a nice job and make sure it's not a total disaster. So the fun thing about buttonholes is if it's working, generally the machine does all the work for you. So we can kind of have a chat. What should we chat about? How generally I use pins for everything. Okay, so one done. Looks good. This gray fabric is just gorgeous. I'm trying to put the buttonhole in the center of where I top stitched um, the placket down and then this edge. So I kind of have my this foot in the center of that. I'm just using buttons for my stash. And the other thing to remember when you're making buttonholes is your the foot on your presser foot, you should try to keep even speeds. The buttonhole will turn out better the more even your speed is and not to go too fast. I don't have this completely turned up and I also don't have it completely floored um, because sometimes I find that if it's too fast, it doesn't catch all the stitches. If it's too slow, though, sometimes it also doesn't whip around the corners like it needs to. So um, a nice even speed is kind of the way to go when you're making buttonholes. I don't know if anyone else has any buttonhole tips. Those are kind of mine. Always do a test, because like I said, sometimes I find that it's not really the right size for the button that I'm using. Um, right, Shelly, so some of that is design preference, some of it is personal preference, some of it is the pattern you're using. So um, sometimes patterns will tell you to put the design or put the buttonhole vertical or horizontal. I'm putting it vertical just because that's the way I want it to look on my pillow. And also my placket isn't really wide enough for it the other way. Um, but I would say most clothing sewing patterns will tell you 
um, tell you which way to put your buttonhole. At least that's what I have found. This sort of project, it's purely personal preference, what you want it to look like. We're doing good, we've got three done, two to go. Again, I just have white thread. I think it's looking just fine on this shimmery gray fabric. I could have gray thread, but it doesn't really seem to be sticking out too much. And my buttons are a mix of gray and blue, so I think it's gonna look nice when those are all put together. Okay, and the last one. So my button um, holer has a little green line, which is to mark the bottom of the buttonhole. And I'm putting that just to the bottom of where the clip was, so that where the clip was is pretty much in the center of where the buttonhole will be. Again, if you measure these with a ruler, they will probably not be exact increments, but I think it's gonna work for the back of our pillow and hopefully not cause a deal, any issues. So once we have the button done, we're going to go back over to the cutting table and pin this overlapping the two pieces on the back of our pillow front that we sewed. And then we can check out how it all looks together. <laughs> Shelly, you're so smart. Faux buttonholes, <laughs> faux buttons, and Velcro. Well, that's why actually I've been loving... Um, snaps. I do a ton of just putting snaps because I find them very easy and durable and for kids clothes or something when you have to put a whole row of buttons down a shirt, not my favorite. Um, so I kind of just go with the default snaps. Now I need to think about which, when I turn this, if I turn this right side out, the buttons need to be under the buttonhole, right? So if this is the right side, here's my buttonholes, the buttons will be on the underneath, okay? So we're gonna try that method that was just described with putting a pin to stop our um, seam ripper and open these buttonholes. So I'm gonna put the pin sort of at the end. Okay, so I'm putting the pin at the top of my buttonhole. And so if my seam ripper goes too far, it's gonna knock into the metal instead of cutting open my stitches. This is kind of a wimpy little seam ripper. I have, my mom gave me a new one for Christmas. Oh, so it works great. So it just bumps right up against there. And if, if it's not cut far enough, I can just take my little scissors then and give it a little quick clip. But if I try my button and it goes through, then we're all set. Okay, so buttonhole number two. The other thing is to make sure you're cutting in a straight line so you don't go off to the side and cut the side of your buttonhole. You can usually fix little things like that with a um, little zigzag stitch rather than redoing the whole buttonhole. At least that's what I try to do. Okay, last one. Okay. <laughs> Yay, pillow farms, <laughs> my favorite. Okay, so again, we said we want the buttons to, button panel to be on top 
of the regular panel so that it can come through. So I'm first going to place, I'm like running out of space here. Um, we'll place this side that has the buttonholes first because that is going to be our under panel. And once we get this on, we're gonna be able to just sew all the way around this pillowcase. And then we'll be done, except for sewing the buttons on. Okay, so then I also wanna put a clip here on this side and a clip here on this side. Looks like I need to trim up this fabric just a little bit, but I'll do that. I'll flip it over and trim in just a minute. Now I wanna line up. We're gonna start by pinning in the middle here so our plackets overlay smoothly. If I have extra fabric on the side, I'm gonna put a pin, the clip's not working, then we'll trim that off. And it looks like I do have a little bit extra fabric. So at this point, I'm gonna turn this over. So you can see that I have extra gray on this side. I'm gonna trim that off. so that um, my serger doesn't have to cut through all that. So, here we go. This side's actually pretty good. So it's just this end really where maybe I didn't take as big of a seam allowance or make as big of a placket as I planned for when I cut these pieces. Okay, so then we'll put a few clips across this edge and we'll go sew. All right, so the thing is, um, when we sew over these plackets, we wanna make sure that we keep them flat and we don't get any buckling or wrinkling in the placket area, okay? So that's probably the only thing to really consider at this point. And then we'll be able to turn through the, um, the overlap hole. Uh, Wanda, these are my favorite new tool and I actually just started using them last year. Um, but they are wonder clips and if you look in the description of this video you will see a link that says my Amazon shop and if you click that you will find the clips listed there in fact the very same ones I have that came in that came in the little cute tin that I have so that's what you can check out all right so we're coming to our first placket overlap so I'm kind of making sure I'm really holding that nice and steady. It was a little bit thick, but no problem going through. This velvet has a little bit of stretch. So again, we're getting where it is pulling off the fabric a little bit. Not my favorite. Um, but let's try another side and see how it all shakes down. Again, you're not gonna notice when it's on the pillow form if it's not completely square. I just don't want it to get totally wonky. Or too small. We'll be trying to stuff a huge pillow form and our pillowcase has gotten like two sizes smaller than we wanted. Okay, so now we're gonna go over the second part. Yeah, Wanda, so they're there and the link should be there. There are a number of different brands on Amazon, but the ones that I have linked in my shop are the exact ones that I'm sewing with, so I can attest that the quality has been pretty good. Okay, so over plaque 
pocket number two. Oh. And my knife is not wanting to cut all this fabric in here. We'll see. Okay, so for our last side, we have the awesome problem of too much gray on this side and too much blue on this side. I hate when it turns out like that. I think the machine actually is stretching the top piece a little bit as it's sewing, which is why then I have opposite top pieces that are off. So we're just gonna uh, split the difference. Because at this point, there's not really a lot of other choices for me to fix this. And I'm going to try and stretch this so that we don't end up with a bubble at the end. Whew. Okay, so it came out flat, but we do have a spot here where I didn't catch the gray, so I'm gonna turn it over to this side so I can see the gray. And just sew this part a little bit again, catching that fabric. Okay, now, now is the true test. So we have this hole that we will have buttons on and we can turn this right side out and kind of give the, I don't want the corners to be super sharp on my pillow. So I usually just kind of give them a little poke but not like scissors or chopstick sharpness poking out. Okay, and now so, and I put the um, buttons going up and down in the back. That's what I wanted, Winter Wonderland. And now let's try to stuff our pillow into the case. And then we'll take a little field trip down to the family room so I can show you the other pillowcases I've been working on as well as my new art on the wall that I want to show off. You might have seen the blog post. If you did, it's the same. Okay, so now I think it's going to work just fine. Okay, so here is where our buttons are going to go. And it's going to pull those just perfect. Okay, so I think It looks so pretty. Okay, Dallas Cowboys colors. Uh oh. <laughs> um, okay, so and you kind of you kind of always need to like give your pillow a few whacks to get the uh, stuffing in the right spots, especially in the corners. You know, I like to put it in there and then whack it, sit on it, give it a good smush. So okay, so now. We are gonna turn the camera around and go down to the sewing room or the family room. Um, let me see if I can turn this back. There we go, okay. So we have some snow clothes warming by the hearth. I'm gonna, I'm just putting this pillow here on the couch. Okay, so here's the one I made, just the plain blue. And um, then here's our new one. So I think that is a really nice set. I also recently made these white ones out of minky fabric and I did put zippers in them so I can change out if I want. Looks like the thread to clip. But so we have two small ones, new pillows as well. So we can kind of add those and there we have some new pillows for 
our decoration. And then if you saw my blog post yesterday, you saw that I was talking about making these big signs with the vinyl letters. So that's actually vinyl on there. But I love the way it turned out. I did that one. And then I did this one over here. And um, in my blog post, I talk about why we have this big empty space on our wall. And I know, Shelly, that's why they have zippers on them, so I can wash them and bleach them. Um, but so we have this big empty space on our wall, and it's because we use this area to watch TV. And I, tell, I kind of go into the whole story in my blog post, so if you're interested in reading about why we watch TV on our wall, you can um, go to lifesosavory.com. It's yesterday's post, which is the top one, and you'll find out more about it. But here is our mostly finished Winter Wonderland pillow. Again, you can buy the fabric panel through the link in the description of this video, and check out the other links that will give you tutorials on how to put pillows together if you don't have a method that you prefer. So there you go. I will sew on the buttons and then we'll have a finished one and I'll be sharing that in photos on my site next week along with some other seasonal pillows so you can check back in then. I thank you for joining me today. We'll do a little finish. Uh, thank you for joining me today. I hope you learned something and enjoyed the sewing. I will um, be back next Wednesday with another sewing tutorial and I will um, hopefully you all stay warm wherever you're at and um, have a good rest of your day. So we'll see you next time. Bye!